communication systems allow a vast number of us to make phone calls, surf the internet and stay in touch with our loved ones at the same time. But have you ever wondered how these communication systems evolved into what they are today? A lot of us would have seen the development of these technologies over the years as consumers. But in this video, we are going to take a deeper look at how these communication systems evolved right from the beginning. These advancements took place over decades and each phase of advancement is called a generation. And with each generation, the speed and accessibility only improved. The journey began in the pre-cellular era known as 0G. In this system, the user had to press a button to record the message which was transmitted when the button was released. And the person on the other end of the system would receive the message over the same channel. This was similar to the usage of a walkie-talkie in which you could send or receive a message but you could not do both at the same time. This problem was solved with the introduction of IMPS or Improved Mobile Phone System which had two channels. One was for listening and the other was for talking. Zero G telephones were initially mounted on cars. These telephones were directly linked to the service providing antennas and had a range of 20 kilometers, beyond which the phones would go unresponsive. Because this technology was dependent on the geographical position of the user, it was also called a low bandwidth network. Bandwidth being defined as the maximum amount of data that can be transferred at any given time. The problem with 0G was that it was not able to accommodate many users at the same time. This led to the development of the first generation of mobile technology. This was called 1G. In 1G technology, the message was encoded into a continuous electrical signal for transmission. With 1G technology, the entire geographical area that had to be serviced was divided into cells. And each of these cells had a dedicated channel for transmission and reception of signals. This allowed many users to connect to the network at the same time. But how did this work? A wide band of frequency was available for communication, which was split into smaller frequency zones. These smaller frequency zones were then assigned to several users for communication at the same time. This was called Frequency Division Multiple Access or FDMA. One inherent problem with 1G technology was just like landlines, you would sometimes experience crosstalk where you would end up in someone else's frequency band. This was prevented by introducing what was called as guard bands. Guard bands was unused frequency which was placed between bands assigned to two different users. Different countries used 1G technology in different ways. For example, the US developed cellular networks based on FDMA and called it the American Mobile Phone System or AMPS. Nordic countries used heavier and bigger cellular phones which would work on signals that could travel longer distances. With 1G technology, people could use phones to talk and listen to the other person at the same time. But the connections were subject to disturbances and the phones were really heavy. Also, people from different countries could not talk to each other. To overcome these and to enable international roaming, 2G technology was introduced, which we will take a look at in our next video. Until then, stay tuned to Skill Link.